Now this is one of my daughter's Jeeps. Uh, this particular one is uh, 2000 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. Uh, belongs to my daughter who's off at university. And uh, seems that while it was parked here the other day, when we had our lawn service come, and let's see if you can see through here. This is what happened to the driver's window, driver's side window, and uh, it's shattered. Luckily, it's tinted, so it held the uh, shattered glass all together. And on top of that, one other problem that I've been having, been meaning to deal with, decided to deal with it now because it's convenient, is that uh, this side mirror has uh, these mirrors. I don't. I don't tell you I fully understand them, but there's a fluid inside of them. These are the heated mirrors. These are off of the limited and the grand chair, uh, limited and the overlands. But uh, they're heated mirrors. You can see by the little emblem right there. Uh, but there's a fluid behind there that, over time, it drains and drops. And anyway, you get a really odd view through your rearview mirror. It's very just kind of odd and disturbing when you're trying to drive. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this mirror which uh, sourced off of eBay and then also I'm going to see what I can do about this very very messed up glass so let's get started we're going to get a start on this thing uh, normally uh, there's a plug uh, a plastic plug right here apparently this one has fallen away and gotten lost in the wash somewhere but uh, normally you would use a uh, you know, body tool panel a panel tool to get up under there and pull that away uh, we don't have that concern because it's missing so there's a uh, behind there is a Phillips screw and this Phillips screw holds the door panel up against the door right at the area where we're going to be replacing the window or the mirror so that's going to go ultimately we've got to take this entire panel away and uh, so that we can get to both the mirror and get to the window. Another Phillips screw right down in here along with a bunch of crud. But these little cups they tend to collect crud. So let's take out this Phillips screw and that my friends is pretty much everything that's holding that door panel up the door so now you should begin to be able to loosen it again I use these body trim pole tools and uh, start getting that in there and one thing also we're going to do you'll see is we'll replace the tabs that hold the door to the door frame as they are uh, I don't say they're single use but after a few years they're not going to work again for you. So just work your way around, loosen the door panel up, and there is, in fact, one more screw that I forgot about. My apologies. There's one right behind this door handle. Again, this is the nice thing about it. You should begin to be able to feel your way along and determine if you've missed a screw. This particular one is a Torx head, so let me go get a Torx driver. All right, so we got that last screw out of the, uh, the hole here behind the, the door handle. Just have to lift the handle away, take it out. It's a Torx, like a T25, I believe it is. Um, Maybe different on yours. Sometimes these screws get interchanged over Here's the people taking them off, putting them on. You never know. Check and look. And there's always one more screw on a body panel. Uh, no matter what you do, it seems like there's always one more screw. So hopefully this is it this time. Three screws, one here, one down in this pull cup, and then one here behind the door handle. So based on that then, no, yeah, I'd say that was it. So the door panel comes away. A few things we need to deal with behind the door panel. Let's see if we can do that. I'm trying to get you the best view I can behind the door panel. Um, in this case, these clips are a little yellow. They can be yellow or white. Let me get you a little better view. 
um, right here where my hand is. Basically, you push these away, and they pop that way. You rotate them, and release this arm out. This is for the lock and door release mechanism. that way lift the bar up so now those two bars are disconnected there are different links they can only go back to a certain location it's not too difficult also plugs you have several electrical plugs we have one here which controls uh, the door lock and the power window uh, connections and then you have one here this particular one is particularly relevant um, this is the this is the plug that manages the power window. And so we definitely got to take that one off just because we're taking off that power window. And then finally there's one other plug right here. We'll just connect it. So set it aside. So the door, door panel's off. Move us around a little bit. So the door panel is off, and we can begin to make uh, headway. Uh, you'll see here, this is where the mirror is. Uh, in order to get the mirror off, this little rubber cushion pad has to come off. I take it off as gently as you can. It's just stuck on with some adhesive backing. So that's off. Now what you'll see is three bolts Get you up here where you can see better you'll see three bolts one two three I'm going to have to check they look like a number 10 they might be a number 8 but I'll let you know those must come out then as we're looking at this window situation the uh, there's a rubber shield um, that goes on, on the door here um, and it's stuck with this tarry looking stuff here and so this has to come off at least come down way down out of the way and so uh, we're going to also have to take out this speaker this is an aftermarket speaker uh, and it's a Phillips screwdriver let's go ahead and do that while we're here take out that speaker I say you have to take it out. Uh, one, the rubber liner is behind it, so take it out for that purpose. Um, but also, you're going to need you need a fair number of places to put your hand up inside this door as we begin to work on as we begin to work on this uh, window. You just need a lot of access points, so. We're going to make sure this one has got a gray wire on the bottom, gray and white on the top. It'll still work, even if it's miswired, one wire or the other, um, but it'll be audio-wise and be considered out of phase. So, we'll just try to be all that kind of good and keep it in phase if it was in phase. I'm not even sure it was. Okay, so... I apologize for this glare. The sun's starting to come up over the house. And it's kind of messing up our work area a little bit. So, we're going to go ahead and take this liner off. The rest of the way down, you'll see the thing is terribly, terribly degraded. Um, we'll see what happens to it later. What we decide to do with it later. Um, it's, not, it's not a lot of use right now. We'll figure it out. So, liner's down. Down far enough, I think, for what we need to deal with. We can access all the holes and the like. There's already a lot of glass down here in the bottom, which has apparently come off the bottom portion here. So, we're going to put out a tarp because I think we may be fixing to make a mess. Well, we sit with a bit of a decision. 
how how do we get this window out of here? Uh, I'm sorry about the, the sunshine this morning. Well, I'm not sorry about it. I'm sorry it's on the video. Um, and how do we get this window out of here now? Uh, if you can, I'm not sure if you can tell, but whenever I tap it, it just wants to move um, very, <laughs> very much. Um, it's it's a uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The window's tinted. And so, um, part of me says, well, let's just go ahead and push it, push it out of here one way or the other, in or out. And I uh, hope the tent holds it together as much as possible. Part of me says, well, you can roll the window down into the door. Um, but the door's already got a reasonable amount of boxes. And I, I assume from the bottom portion of the door where the tent didn't extend to. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it out. Um, I've got a tarp on the ground. Let's see if I can show you. But uh, there's a tarp here on the ground to try to catch the lion's share of it. Um, but it's going to pretty much, I think, go more places than we want. So, what to do, what to do. I think the answer for what to do right now is just push it out one way or the other. I think I'm going to push it out, uh, out of the car. I'm going to close the door to and see what we can do so, hang with me sorry about the glare pushes out a long way Now you know, seems like pushing it out worked. You've got to do a lot of disengaging to get it out of the out of the track. Uh, on the sides and the top, uh, it tends to want to. Oh, it's up in there. You know, the window was closed when it broke, so it's uh, stuck up in there. So now we're going to start just by taking a screwdriver. Coming along these top ones here, the sides, and start getting these flash shards out. Ooh, it's gonna be fun. Hey, look, you don't need to see all this. I get back with it. All right, well we got the window out. Do me a favor. Clear your tracks, all tracks, all sides, top, bottom. Clear them really, really well. Um, one thing that'll break glass is, well, it's other glass. So if you put that glass in here and you go jam it up to the top and you manage to find you go to chunk of glass, you might just well be able to break a brand new window. So clear it, clear it out well. I still got a little bit, it's like I still got a little down in there. So we'll get that out. But uh, just take the time to get the glass out of the rails, out of the tracks, so that you don't have that worry later. Okay, so you see there's the bulk of the glass came out, ah, not whole, but uh, the, the tent certainly uh, limited how much glass we had going everywhere. Also kept it in the window at the time it broke. So, well, I guess that'll make you love tent. Um, and the next thing we want to do is we need to take out uh, the old bar that we, oh, sorry, what do you call it, the, the old window support, that uh, metal port part that hooks to the bottom of the glass. So let me see if I can get a view of this for you and we'll take this thing out. So I'm going to do my best to show this to you and explain it to you. don't know that I can get to it with the tool right now, but there's a metal clip on this door thing is right there within the my screwdriver. If I pull back, ugh, making a lot of noise. Hang on. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to pull back at this angle. 
Um, but if you pull back on that little metal loop, uh, it's right there at the end of my screwdriver. If you pull back on that metal loop, then that's what disengages the track. I'll show you that more once it's out. It's a lot easier to see. I'm hoping I can get you a better view of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So look right back there. There's a metal clip. We're going to grab that metal clip with our little vice grips, baby vice grips here. We're going to pull it out. There's the metal clip. Now, you don't have to pull the metal clip all the way out necessarily, but I did just because, well, it's just that easy. Um, so here is what's left of our window. This is the part that holds the window into the riser track. You can see there, there's the area where those clips go around. So one clip each side, pull them out or at least disengage them. They don't necessarily have to come all the way out. And then this piece comes out and we're ready to go in with a new window after we clean up some of this glass that's getting all over my feet.